In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an open science framework project ready for a blind peer review. Um, so right here, you can see on my screen that we're logged into the open science framework. Um, and I just have a basic example project here um, that I'm going to be demonstrating on. Um, so basically, I'm going to walk through the steps of if you've done something within the open science framework, like a pre registration or open materials or open data, um, how you get those ready to go through a blind peer review. Um, so the first thing you'll notice on this example project uh, example project homepage, we're here within a project's homepage, is there's this box right here called citation. And if you click on the box with citation, you'll see that there's actually already a link to your OSF project. It's just a couple of letters, easy to see. Um, and so this link is very good for the final stages of a publication. It will link to everything within your open science framework project that's public. Um, and so you should keep this link on hand for the final stages of a publication. But the problem with this link is it's attached to your name. And so if you give someone this link, they'll see this thing that says contributors, they'll see the recent activity has your name next to it. And so this link is not good for the peer review process. And so we actually need to take a, a few more steps before um, we end up using this link um, in order to make sure that the peer review process stays blinded. And so I'm going to walk us through um, the different ways that you'll make sure that your project is ready for a blind peer review to make sure that your name stays anonymous through that process. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is on this homepage, we have these two buttons at the top right, one that says private and one that says make public. And so um, your project will always start off as private. When you're ready to submit it to anonymous peer review, make sure that you click make public and you'll get this warning that says once you've done this, um, certain components are going to remain public, even if you switch it back to private, um, but just go ahead and make sure that you confirm that that's okay. And now your project is accessible to the public. Um, this means that it's searchable within OSF's databases, um, etc. but that's the first step to make sure that your links are accessible. Now there's several different things that you could have done within the open science framework that you want to submit to the peer review process. So you might have um, done a pre-registration, you might be sharing your materials, your data, um, other files, et cetera. And the way that OSF is currently set up is that you actually need a different link for an anonymous pre-registration than you do for any other files in an open science framework um, storage capacity. And so basically we're gonna walk through how to make a blinded link for a pre-registration, and then how to make a blinded link for the other materials that may be in your OSF project. Hopefully in the future, OSF will set this up in such a way that you can use the same link for all of this. Um, but right now, the way that it works is you need a separate link for your pre-registration than you do for your materials and data. The important thing to keep in mind is eventually, after your project has hopefully made it through the peer review process and gotten to the final stages of publication, you'll want to swap out all of those anonymous links with just this short link, um, because it doesn't need to be anonymous anymore at that point. And the good thing is this link will work for both your pre-registrations and any materials or data or files in your project. So you only need two separate links for pre-registrations and other files when they're anonymous. Once it's no longer necessary for it to be anonymous, you can just use one link for the whole project. Um, I don't know why OSF is set up in that way, but it currently is, and hopefully that won't be the way that it works in the future. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to make an anonymous link to a pre-registration. And so the first thing that you're going to do is click on the registrations tab, and hopefully you'll find a pre-registration that you've already done in here. Um, again, I've made an example pre-registration for us to walk through this process. Um, but there were kind of two different routes that you could have taken when you originally published your pre-registration. One is that you could have made it public immediately, the other being that you could have embargoed it for a certain amount of time. Um, and if you embargoed your project for a certain amount of time and that time hasn't yet passed, you need to manually unembargo your project, meaning um, it no longer needs to be hidden from the public. Um, so when you're ready to send it through peer review, if it says embargoed, the first thing that you need to do is unembargo that project. And so you're going to do that by clicking into the project. And you'll see here on the top left that it says embargoed registration. And you'll click on the arrow and you'll click end embargo early. And then you'll just get a warning message, go ahead and confirm that. And then every person who was listed as a contributor on the um, 
on the pre-registration is now going to get an email saying, do you approve this embargo ending early? Um, and so I think that only one person needs to say yes in order for the embargo period to technically end, um, but it might be the case that everybody needs to. But I think from my recollection, it's just one person who needs to say yes, this embargo period can end. Um, and there's the email warning me that the embargo period has tried to end. Um, and so in order for you to now have a link to this pre-registration, which has now been made public because we clicked on make public on that first page, and now we've ended the embargo period, we now need to get an anonymous link for this project um, or for this project's pre-registration more specifically. And so the way that you're going to do that is you're gonna click on this button that says contributors, and that's going to bring you to a page that allows you to create a view only link for this pre registration. And so if you go ahead and click add, um, you can see that you can create a new link to share your project, you can name it if you want so i'd say um, pre registration link for blind peer review and then you're going to want to click on this anonymized contributor link list for this link. Um, so when you do that, it will change anything that has your name on it to instead an anonymous contributor. It will say anonymous contributor on the list of authors, et cetera. Um, and so once you've clicked create, it will then give you this link down here. And that's the link that you can use in your um, submission to the journal um, for peer reviewers to see your pre-registration in a blinded format. And that's how you make an anonymous link ready for peer review um, for the pre-registration. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is only the link to that pre-registration. So if you have multiple pre-registrations, you'll have to have multiple links. Um, and this link will not give them access to the materials or data or other files in your Open Science Framework um, project. But that's not the case for non-anonymous links. So as I said, by the time you get to the end of the publication, uh, the end stages of the peer review process, you can swap all of these links out for one single link. But for right now, the way that OSF works is you have to have separate links for separate pre-registrations, and you have to have a separate link for a pre-registration than you do for data and materials and other files. Um, so this is how you make the um, pre-registrations ready for blind peer review. Now, what if you have um, open materials or open data or open code or other kinds of open materials? Um, the way that you're going to make those ready for anonymous peer review is um, you're going to go ahead and click on the settings button in your project. And the settings button has not taken me to the settings. Hold on one second. Okay, so maybe don't click there through the pre-registrations tab that we were already on. Um, I'm back on the home page of this project. Um, so you can go back to the home page of the project and instead now click on settings. I'm not sure why we got that bug. Um, but if you go ahead and click on settings from the home page of the project rather than the pre-registrations li uh, link, um, you can see now that we have a similar box that we had on the pre-registration um, that says view only links create a, a link to share this project. So go ahead and do that. You can again do for blinded peer review, um, uh, give it a name and go ahead and click on anonymized contributor list for this link, create it. And you'll now see similar to the other thing that we now have a link that will go to the project itself. Now this link will be good for if you have open data or open materials, open code, whatever open um, files that you may have in your project, this link will be for that. And so um, just as like a basic recap, um, the homepage will have a, a non-anonymized link to your OSF page. And that's the link that you're gonna wanna put in at the final stages of the publication. It will give access to your registrations, um, to whatever files you have stored in your OSF um, project. But before you get to that stage, when you're going through peer review, you're gonna wanna make sure that um, the first step for all of this is making sure that on the homepage, your um, project is made public. On the registrations, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've ended any embargo period. You're gonna to wanna to then create a view only link. Make sure that you click anonymize contributors. That will give you a link to the pre-registration. And then if you need to make a link for the um, files in your project, like data or materials or code or whatever else you might have, then you'll go to the settings page and create another view only link and make sure that you anonymize that contributor list. Um, so lots of steps. Hopefully this will be streamlined in, streamlined in the future, um, but hopefully that answers any questions that you have about how to make your open science framework materials um, ready for anonymous peer review.